Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day 27 of the Lico Day Challenge. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's daily problem. Uh, I finally <laughs> I finally took a rest day. I have not skipped the gym in about three months, but I think it's time that I took a break. So today I feel a little bit better, but, but my body is still very sore, so we'll see how that goes in a couple of days. So today we have 1514, path with maximum probability. So you're given an undirected rated graph of end nodes. Uh, oh wait, one thing that I wanted to say before the problem is that I think we get tied up on these streaks and I do did as well because um, I had a 50 day running streak and like a 70 day or maybe more uh, just workout streak because even on my running days off I go to the gym. But, but uh, you know at the end of the day you, you your goal is, you should figure out what your goals are, and my goal is not to have good workouts, my goal is to get good at things, right? Like, like running, my goal is not to, to perform well in, during the workouts, my, my goal is to perform well during the races, right? So I'm just trying to, um, you know, rest and hopefully get to that. My back is a little sore, and I don't even know why, but um, I mean, I, I guess I ran like 12 miles yesterday, but still, or whatever, 13 miles, whatever it is, I don't know, eh, body's getting old. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> so you're given an undirected graph of end nodes. You have edges, edge list, uh, and unrated but probability. Hmm. Why don't they just not put it as part of the edges? Hmm, that's weird. Okay, but anyway, uh, <laughs> they call it suck probability. I guess it means success, but still. What a terrible, <laughs> what a terrible, uh, wearable name. Anyway, parameter name. Okay, given start to end, find the path with the maximum probability of success. Okay, uh, I mean, I think one thing to kind of realize in general, right, with the shortest path problems, or like just identify from shortest path algorithms anyway, is that they operate on the principle of greed, right? Uh, they're all greedy because the idea, well, not all of them, but many of them are, right? Like Dijkstra's, BFS, I know that Bellman 4 technically is not greedy. Or oh, maybe it is, I don't know. Depending on how you want to f define it. Um, but anyway, but and the reason why greed work is that you can kind of say it in English, which is that um, the pa best path to from A to B is, uh, you know, you're trying to get from A to C, and, you know, A goes to B and B goes to C or something like that, and the shortest path kind of connects them in that way, right? I didn't say it that that well that time I don't think but that's basically the idea so probability it, um, I assume that we just kind of multiply the things instead right and if you think about multiplication <coughs> uh, if you try to maximize the uh, thing then that you know the, if you just kind of take the greedy principle it should be okay right you just want to get to uh, a node with the maximum probability because and the path doesn't matter as long as you have the maximum probability in this particular problem right I mean sometimes some problems will make it uh, the path matter um, and for example like um, what you might call it uh, Hamiltonian path right the path matters because you cannot visit the same node twice or something like this or same the same path yeah same node right um, and the other one is the uh, same edge or the cycle right or whatever and so uh yeah so because you uh, i mean I, maybe you can definitely try to prove it with greed uh, or prove the greedy algorithm but in general it is you know that's just the idea right is that uh sorry i feel like i don't know why uh, i'm like i feel like i'm i, I need to take some uh uh, antihistamine or something. I, I'm just like uh, maybe allergic to something in the apartment or something. I don't know. I just have trouble like speaking as you can see like I'm swallowing up a bit. So definitely my apologies if I'm talking a little bit slowly and deliberately. But in any case, I don't know. Maybe it's allergies. But yeah, um, so we can definitely do that and we will just do that and we'll have a shortest path idea of the shortest path and like I said, right? Um, if you're trying to go to, to 
path be of pro maximum probability, then it doesn't matter what the path is per se, right? So yeah, um, and here we're going to use Dijkstra's algorithm um, because it allows us to um, relax with the maximum probability um, because they are, um, they are because the rate is the probability um, and the operation is just multiply, right? Um, because as you kind of uh, multiply more and more, um, it just get lower and lower. And of course, if you, given this idea, um, you have to make sure that there are no cycles, right? Uh, or not that there are no cycles. Of course, there are cycles, but a negative, um, negative rate cycles, right? Or in this case, cycles that gives you more than one probability. Um, which is obviously just not possible. In fact, it shouldn't be possible that uh, the suck probability is better than 100%. But, um, but you know, these are just kind of things that you assume, but sometimes some, some, uh, some contest farms will, will uh, you know, do really silly things about it. So yeah, uh, okay, so let's, let's get to it. Uh, let's just say we can have, yeah. times n and that's basically our best thing right uh, the other thing we want to do first though is convert the edges right and then we put in an adjacency list right I mean, uh, today again, maybe I'm not going to, I don't know, I, I'm just struggling today uh, with talking. Like, I think I'm, I'm hearing a little bit, but I don't know, maybe it's just some like allergy stuff or like some, from something I'm allergic to in the apartment. I don't know what it is, but I am definitely getting allergy symptoms. Maybe it's four, maybe there's a tree I'm allergic to. I don't know. I just came back from outside. So anyway, my apologies. But, uh, but yeah, this is just converting to an adjacency list where we have two things right where one is the the second node that we're connecting to and the probability of going to it and i assume that these are um the probability is um symmetric meaning a goes to b and b goes to a are the same it seems to seem that way but you know sometimes you have to read carefully because i don't know i, ma I made a lot of mistakes being wrong before so first we, we relax by saying best of start node is equal to um, 1.0 for 100%. And then we just put this in the heap, right? right 1.0 star node, right? I don't know why I put it in a way in this case. And this is going to be just very standard. Um, uh, very standard. Um, what you call it? Um, Dijkstra's algorithm. Uh, I'm not going to go over it that deeply. You do have to. It is a minor change um, to change it from you know just a regular shortest path to probability. I think we talk about it sometimes. Is that um, I think. I think in the past I was talking, I mean, I talk a lot about like you writing something like if P is greater than best of node or something like this, or maybe the other direction. I don't, in, in this case, it may be the other direction. But I think a better way to actually write this is actually maybe, or uh, like uh, a more intuitive way to think about it is that we have a used array. And here the idea is just that uh, if it is used rather, oops. And that's all. The idea here is that for every node, um, the first time we we relax it or come to this relaxation process, which is when it comes to uh, when we pop it off the keep, that means that it is going to have the maximum, in this case, maximum probability, or in the shortest path problem, the shortest um, the shortest way is ever going to go because the you know the because in the heap it is sorted, so if it comes later, that is, it's going to have a higher cost, right? So therefore, every edge that goes forward are also going to have higher cost. So you just you should should just skip it. 
And the reason why I um, this is needed, even though it might not appear in textbooks, is that uh, heaps has a thing called update, or like the the theoretical heaps, the heaps that are in the textbooks have a thing that's like an update. Um, just an update function for you to kind of update, uh, call an update so that it updates uh, a, a node's value so that each node will only appear in each heap once. But here, as a, a, a because of the way that we're doing it, it's called lazy heaping, maybe. maybe no, some lazy heap removal, I guess. Uh, I forget that. I'm, I'm going out in terms of my apologies. But it's something, something lazy. Um, that means that each node may appear in the heap more than once. In fact, um, it can appear all of ye times, where it's the number of edges that it can appear, right? So yeah, so these are the things, and it, I, I know that I, when I wrote it in, in the past, um, it's kind of confusing, and people don't know why, but now I want to write it in this way in the future, at least for non-contest solutions, so that um, it's more clear, right? So then if it's used, then we continue, because we've already done it before, otherwise we set it to use, and then yeah, and then we just go for all the um, all the uh, edges connected to this. Um, mm, P is the terrible name. Mm. Uh, maybe a current P. Maybe that's a little bit better. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then now we have um, yeah new P is equal to current P times P, right? And then if um, best of v is greater than np or smaller than np because we want to maximize it right then we said is there np and then we also put it into the heap uh what am i writing Keep it in mind that in a breakfast, uh, unlike in a breakfast search is what I want to say, you don't have to check that it is not used. Um, but, even though I guess you can, but it doesn't really matter whether you do or not because, um, I mean, I guess you should just by convention, but you don't have to because th this should take care of it for us. Eventually, as we get more and more edges, this will get big enough that it will never be true, right? So, uh, and it doesn't go back and forth because of this, right? We don't relax each, uh, so each edge gets only relaxed once, uh, but maybe checked twice, but relaxed once, right? So yeah, and then at the end, we can just return um, best of n node, and we should be good. Uh, because if we never update it, it will give us 0, 0.0, right? Let's give a quick submit. Hopefully I didn't make a silly mistake. Oh no. Did I misunderstand this problem? Maybe I did. How did I get a wrong? This is such a wrong answer. Oh, 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 I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. Uh, <laughs> I, I was just a little bit late. I, I was too focused on kind of like just talking about this and the structure that I forgot that heap is a min heap, right, in Python. Uh, it, it doesn't just magically do what it wants. And of course, because it's a min heap, this is going to be uh, keep on giving us the minimum probability, which is not what we want. We want the maximum probability, so we want um, the reverse version of this, which we can kind of fake by using a negative thing, right? So then here, right, and then maybe we can write current p. We we convert it convert it back to um, the positive version, so that we, all this makes sense. And then here, uh, when we put it back in the heap, we put negative p. Man, that was just like randomly lucky that it works for examples now. But yeah, um, so hopefully that makes sense. We even had a silly mistake just to kind of, you know, illustrate it. Um, yeah, and I think, oh, I did have this here. Why did this terminate TLE? That is weird. Last time. Hmm. hmm. Oh, I made the same mistake last time with, with the min heap. Oh, well. Uh, and I think, I guess it probably does something funky. Um, but yeah. Uh, what is the complexity here, right? Well, how many items can heap have at most? It's going to be have ye number of elements, ye being the number of edges. Um, but 
but most of them will, will terminate before here. So then now, if you want to say, you know, so so this has at most yield number of elements because for each edge we push something onto the heap, right? Because we only push something to the heap um, once for each edge, maybe twice, I guess, on both sides, right? If if you, want, if you want to count that as an edge, so that means that heap will have at most um, heap number of elements. So this is all of ye. But of course, we only relax uh, n times, right? Because of this, so we don't do this for loop ye times. We do this for loop n times because uh, we, def you know, this is, this just limits each node to do it once. Um, so that means that um, it is going to be n log ye or v log ye, if you want to call it that. Um, and that's just uh, pretty dexterous stuff, right? So nothing that tricky about it uh, if you're already very familiar with Dijkstra's and as I would say Dijkstra is definitely something that is very um, very much in, in the real uh, side guys so definitely um, definitely work on it definitely practice it definitely be familiar with it and that's all I have for today let me know what you think thanks for watching stay good stay healthy to good mental health I'll see y'all later and take care bye bye